Unit 6, Period 6, Section 4, Consequences of the Gilded Age. We've been talking about, um, of course, the ascension of the robber barons, uh, individual men who used unfair business practices to control entire industries. And then we said one of the consequences of this was um, the fact that they abused their workers and um, for profits. Well, a response to this is the formation of labor unions. And we talked about the American Federation of Labor. And then we talked about a result of these labor unions were, was a bloody strike in 1894 known as the Pullman Strike. Well, the group that's going to fill a lot of these jobs and be taken advantage of by these robber barons are going to be the new immigrants. And what I mean by that is the immigrants that came to the United States during the second industrial revolution. When did the second industrial revolution begin? Uh, during and after the Civil War. The old immigrants that arrived to the United States mostly came from the uh, countries uh, that my mouse is pointing at here, Norway, Sweden, Finland, then Northern Europe, and England, and France, and Germany, and Belgium, and Ireland, in Western Europe. Those are considered the old immigrants. These are the immigrants that arrived when America was first, mostly arrived when America was first founded, and then later after the, up to the Civil War. And then after the Civil War, you're going to see more immigrants from Southern Europe, Spain, Italy, Greece, here, and Eastern Europe, uh, the the Slavic countries, Croatia, Slovenia, Austria, Austria Czechoslovakia, Poland, Russia. Uh, more immigrants are going to arrive here from um, these locations. These Southern and Eastern Europeans are going to face a tremendous amount of discrimination in our country because they came here for you know civil wars were going on in Europe and they had to come to the United States and many of them lacked formal education and American Native Americans Americans born here in the United States believed that they were ignorant and only capable of working the lowest paying jobs so many were discriminated against. They arrived in the United States through Ellis Island, pictured here. Uh, it's right in the river outside the city of, of the island of Manhattan, and that's the Ellis Island. And Ellis Island was a processing station for immigrants. They would come and in a two to three day period would be uh, interviewed, uh, given physicals. Uh, it was a very difficult process. Uh, before they would be allowed to disembark from the island and allowed to enter the city of New York. This is a picture of what some of the uh, stations were like inside the building at Ellis Island. And this is a picture of immigrants arriving at Ellis Island uh, off their boats. They, they would be transported by ferry to Ellis Island and then um, we know that uh, New York's going to grow as one of the largest cities in the United States. About 11,747 immigrants uh, were, could be processed at Ellis Island per day. That leads to a uh, number increase in the United States between 1860 and 1920 of 25 million immigrants. And New York is going to become, again, the largest city in the United States. This is a good picture to show you just the size of it. And you're going to find neighborhoods in New York where English language is not even spoken. That, you know, entire neighborhoods of, of Polish immigrants, whole neighborhoods of Chinese immigrants, so on and so forth. New York, again, here's a, a good draw, drawing of what New York may have looked like. You can see the Brooklyn Bridge, you can see the island of Manhattan. Uh, about right here is where the World Trade Centers would have be located in the future. 
And this is the reason you can see the importance of the lakes and uh, New York's uh, proximity to the Atlantic Ocean uh, lakes, rivers, and, and its proxim proximity to the Atlantic Ocean leads New York to become one of the greatest cities uh, in America.